Jiu-Jitsu is the hardest martial art to learn. Stick around and I'll tell you why. It takes around six to 12 months to learn all the basic BJJ positions, framing, and to get a solid level of Muay Thai fitness. However, body type, mentality, and athletic ability, and having martial arts experience will affect how hard BJJ is to learn. And it takes one to two years to get the first BJJ belt, the blue belt. And yeah, BJJ is, is, is very hard to learn. Out of all the martial arts I've done, you know, boxing, Muay Thai, Muay Thai is quite simple, whereas BJJ is so complicated. It's almost like learning another language. Because if you don't know how to roll or forward roll, all these movements, the muscle memory to be able to forward roll. So it took a very, very long time for me to get to even the basic level of BJJ technique. And that's not to mention, you know, everything you can do in BJJ is going to have maybe 11, 12 steps to it. Whereas Muay Thai, you know, to kick is maybe four steps. Doesn't mean it's easy to kick, but it's a lot easier than, you know, going for a guard pass, going for sweeps, certain submissions. It's a long, very long process. What is going on, guys? It's Dylan, aka the Combat Sports Guy. This channel is going to have everything combat sports related. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, please like and subscribe and comment down below any other questions you want answered. We're going to do videos every Monday and Friday. So as I said, five reasons why BJJ is so hard to learn. BJJ has unconventional movements. The typical BJJ warm-up involves many movements that are quite awkward. For example, in my first, in my gym, our first warm-up will be backwards and forward rolls. I was never good at gymnastics as a kid. I can tell you I was scared to do the forward rolls. I don't know, it's something about flipping that was very unnatural to me. It was, it was intimidating. I could only roll, yeah? Like, I'm 25 now, yeah? I learned how to do a forward roll and backward roll when I was 25. You can believe that. And, you know, they're the most basic movements for jiu-jitsu. These movements are essential for BJJ success. And I like combo sports like Muay Thai. Everyone knows how to throw a sort of kick. Everyone knows how to kick. It obviously is not going to be like the Muay Thai roundhouse. But everyone knows how to do a basic kick, a basic punch. It's quite a natural movement. BJJ has tons of movements that are not natural like that. Even basic concepts like the guard and shrimping, which is still a bit confusing to me, without an athletic background, if you're trying to learn jujitsu, this is going to take a very long time for you to understand these movements. It can be intimidating not knowing how to roll. And being shown up in class, if your instructor isn't a nice guy, is not good. So I recommend any BJJ beginner, learn how to do the forward roll, the backwards roll. And don't worry if you don't know any, if you want to learn the techniques and how to do this, please follow, please take a look at my post that I linked down in the description where I input helpful videos to help you on your path to learning basic jiu-jitsu movements. So two, BJJ is the most complicated martial art. Unlike other arts like boxing, BJJ can never truly be mastered and it goes on forever. And it, BJJ is super complicated. And it basically has six basic positions mentioned that I'll talk shortly in a bit. But these positions have many, many, many different variations. And to become decent at BJJ, you're going to have to know two transitions and two submissions from each position. So, for example, the guard is the quintessential BJJ position when you're on your back and you have someone between both your legs. You need to know two ways to submit someone to make someone get choked or tap out from that position. And you need two ways to escape from that position and you need, sorry, and you need another two ways to transition. So for example, you need a sweep, which is where I flip someone when I have my legs on them to when I'm on top of them. So that's a sweep from guard. And if you click on my post there, you will get a guide to the best 16 beginner BJJ moves. So the six fundamental BJJ positions are guard, side mount, mount, knee mount, rear mount, and turtle, side mount, side control. And your body type is going to drastically change the type of positions that cater to you. Like for example, if you're a short guy with short stubby legs, no offense, the guard is not going to be your home. Whereas if you're like me, 
and I can't remember the type of body type, mesomorph. I think it's, I don't know, the one that you're lanky. If you're lanky and you've got long limbs, long legs, obviously the guard makes more sense because you've got longer arms, so you've got longer legs. So as I said, if you're long and lanky like me, the guard will be your home and triangles, which is where you choke some of your leg, will be your submission of choice because obviously we've got long legs, long arms. However, if you're shorter, you have butterfly guard, which is where you have someone have someone's legs in your inner legs so if you've got short legs you can you know what i mean you've got good uh, motion control with that so a typical jujitsu class we involve the teacher drilling a specific section of moves split into about four different segments depending on the average class time an average class time for my gym is an hour with another half an hour spent rolling which is sparring in jujitsu this is important but apparently for a beginner you want to focus your first two years until your blue belt on drilling, drilling, drilling. The problem is, and this is especially for me, one segment can be made out of a lot of individual moves. And if you're anything like me, it's very hard to remember this sequence. Even if you make one mistake, the whole sequence can fall apart. So with a keen eye, it's very difficult to see the mistakes you're making. That's the thing in Jiu Jitsu, it's like, it's not so much like building a house. But to do one thing yeah, in even the you know the four different sequences that your coach is going through, you make one mistake, your opponent can come out. The whole thing falls apart. One little improper placement of your leg, you're doing one thing wrong, and then everything falls. So that's why it's so complicated. Like in Muay Thai, if you kick someone, whether or not the roundhouse is 100% on point, you're still going to kick someone. You know what I mean? Whereas Jiu Jitsu, you know, if you try and do a pass and you do a little bit of something wrong, you won't get the pass. As I said, with learning BJ Muay Thai, the process is similar, but the combinations you will learn will be nowhere near as complicated as the beginner drills in BJJ. Think of BJJ more like a choreographed dance rather than a martial art, because especially as a beginner, you're going to get super confused. Free, you will suffer injuries. Mm -hmm. Compared to Muay Thai and other arts, you will suffer injuries with Jiu Jitsu. I never broke a bone in my 25 years on life, but this changed within my first month, two months of jiu-jitsu. It's true, it's just because if you see jiu-jitsu people rolling, it looks like just random occurrences. But you can easily break a bone just because there's all this transfer force with, you know, the nature of jiu-jitsu. In my case, the guy had a lot of, it was, we were drilling and he had, I think, his knee really high up on my ribs and I had a <coughs> and that I thought it was a good click, but it wasn't a good click. Actually, my rib popped out, it broke. I don't think he should have been putting so much pressure on my top rib, but it wasn't fun. And injuries happen whenever newbies who have poor top technique or body control of an art check ego spar too early. I will not recommend sparring on your first day, maybe your first month, as it's too easy to hurt someone. Yeah, because if you have two beginners fighting each other in Jiu Jitsu, just because of the nature of the sport, you can get injured. I personally would not recommend sparring until maybe two, three months in. But sparring is hella fun. So, you know, if you don't want to listen to me, you want to spar on your first day, it's up to you. So, as I said, my rib fracture happened when someone had me on knee on belly. So, this study that you can see in my post in the description found that white belts were the highest risk of injury in jiu-jitsu athletes. And I can 100% agree. It takes a very long time to get body control with jiu-jitsu. And I can see that Jiu Jitsu has a much higher injury risk than Muay Thai. But do not let injuries to get the better of you, as getting injured in your first month of training will not be fun for anyone. It happens if you keep if it happens, keep on training and be smart of your learning and don't spar until you feel comfortable to minimize your risk of injuries. And four, BJJ has a very high learning curve. Oh no doubt about that. So Rena Gracie, head coach of Gracie Jiu Jitsu, said the following 90% of white belts will never become a blue belt. Only 1% of blue belts become the black belt. As the black belt is the hardest, the hardest belt to get in all martial arts. It takes an average of 10 years. 10 years. Most people will quit at the white belt and I know why. It's not that BJJ is physically demanding and the sparring is difficult, which is true. But it's hard to see gradual progress. Now like I'm still 
you know, I need a lot, a lot of work in jiu-jitsu. And, you know, I was going for four or five, six months, something like that. And then I didn't really feel I was building anything. It's not like Muay Thai where, you know, so if you use someone who improves your tech, kick technique, you can get a lot better, you know, fast. I didn't really see much improvement. I thought, you know what I mean? It was like building a house and then the tide comes in. I just didn't see any gradual improvement to what I was doing. So as I said, the second belt in Jiu-Jitsu, the blue belt, takes an average of one to two years to get. One, if you're super, super committed and it's only martial art. Two, if you, you know, got nine to five doing other things. But that's hard for the second belt, two years. So as I said, picture this. You're the new guy or girl in your gym and you get absolutely smashed every sparring session. And you don't feel your technique is proven. Do you quit? A lot of people clearly do. As jujitsu is very hard and people lose motivation. A black belt is just a white belt who didn't quit. 100%. If you're naturally, if you're not naturally a flake or don't have any grappling experience like I did, it is difficult to embrace the suck and work on improving without ego being involved. And it's not easy, jujitsu. Stick with it and work on improving a little bit every day, and I promise you, your brain neurons will start firing. Before Corona closed the gyms, my brain neurons were, they fired a little bit. They were half firing. So you stick with it and, you know, you know, if you have any athletic, you know, background, you did sports, you're going to pick up jujitsu and all other martial arts a lot quicker than I did. So, so five, the jujitsu is tough. The jujitsu sparring is tough physically and mentally. Sparring BJJ, whether standing up on the ground, you're literally trying to choke the other person out or make them tap and then you reset the position. So you you know you could either start with two people standing up and then if the other person chokes you out then you start standing up again or one person standing up and one person being a butt scooter where they're on their ground on the ground and you're trying to pass their guard. Which is again past their legs. And usually as I said, sparring happens after the session is finished. In BJJ, sparring other belts are super difficult when you have limited knowledge. You honestly will feel hopeless and will constantly fight for your life in every spot. And other martial arts like BJJ, Muay Thai allows you to, sorry, BJJ allows you to, to fight with 100% intensity as there's no striking, but you can still get injured. Because you got to think, no matter people I know here, yeah, maybe weigh 50 pounds less than me, 40 pounds, even my good friend, they take you out easy. Because Jiu-Jitsu, unlike Muay Thai, which is, you know, obviously technique is extremely important. But you can overwhelm someone with just, you know, you're stronger, you're bigger, you're taller. In Jiu-Jitsu, obviously strength matters, endurance matters, but it's more about technique. You could be taken out, even if you're a 200 pound guy who goes gym, you know, a 110 pound girl can choke you out and win. Because it's, you know, it's just that, that sport. So three reasons why Jiu-Jitsu sparring is hard. Sparring someone better than you. You'll never feel more helpless than sparring a higher belt as BJJ has the highest ceiling of any martial art. you feel like you can't do anything. Mm. Higher belts will practice new submissions and special techniques. So be ready to be human guinea pig. 100% because it's too easy. If you're sparring someone that you are a belt above. If a blue, for example, if you're a blue belt, you've been going to jiu-jitsu for two years. And you're sparring a white belt who is a fresh guy or girl from the gym. For you to take them out is easy. Not necessarily easy if that person has a you know any grappling experience, but if you know they could take them out like that, like that. So you know they'll mess around. They might let you you know take their back so they can work on their escapes. You know what I mean? It's it's it's, it's a play thing. Second, BJJ sparring destroys your ego. BJJ is rare among martial arts, as I mentioned this, as a technique is more important than athleticism. 115 pound girl can choke out 180 pound plus man in BJJ. I wouldn't say the same about Muay Thai or other martial arts. Because Muay Thai, if you're a bigger person, even if the girl or a smaller guy is a lot more technically gifted than you, just because of the, how big the person is, they won't be able to transfer as much force against you to injure you. But in Jiu Jitsu, you know what I mean? That's not the same thing. And even if you're a bigger flat guy, you be destroyed again and again and again by people smaller than you. I regularly tapped out, I said this before, to people 20 to 40 pounds lighter than me. And I've become used to it. For me, I don't have too much of an ego, so it didn't really affect me. But if you're that person who think you're a big man, you think you're a bad guy, 
and you get tapped out by people smaller than you, you know, it's an ego check, which is good for everyone. Everyone should do it because people don't get checked in everyday life. You have to get checked. You have to realize you can die because you can. Exactly. So it's even if you can get chalked out by a small girl or a smaller man, this can be demoralizing. If that sounds like you, it's even more important you train jujitsu as it humbles you and teaches you self-respect. This is the third thing. BJJ sparring is uncomfortable. Have you ever been choked out? I have. I can assure you it's not comfortable. And worse still, some of the being in the bottom position in jujitsu, being in side control when someone's mounted on you, it's not good. BJ positions like the bottom of mount are horrible. Like if you're claustrophobic like I am somewhat, and you know, someone's junk is right in your face and that, you know, they're mounted on top of you and you're trying to get out, it's a horrible feeling. You know, you feel like, obviously, you're getting choked. It's not good. And, you know what I mean? you got to get used to these uncomfortable situations. To truly succeed as a BJJ white belt, you must be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And still be able to breathe clearly and calmly escape from these positions. BJJ is fantastic for real life because of being able to think under pressure. And this is why I recommend you learn it. Because you have to think. A lot of people in jiu-jitsu, they have bad breathing they're like oh, oh, oh. you know like a dog that's trying to you know dehydrate a dog you have to breathe you have to be calm like even when i'm getting choked out and you know my technique needs a lot of work i'm thinking okay how can i get out of this but yeah i hope you understand why jujitsu is hard it definitely is hard but if you like this sort of content please like and subscribe i'm gonna go back to the gym soon so i have more content more b-roll to show you guys and i appreciate you watching this video Thank you so much. Hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.